Yes, we all know you can shoot cool content with the Mini 3, but did you know you can do this with it? This 3D model of a tiny house was captured using an inspection software and was completely shot using this little guy here, the DJI Mini 3 Pro. This video I'm going to dive deeper into using this drone for inspection work and I'll also show you how I created this 3D model. So, let's get into it. Welcome to another video, my name is Aaron Rajamani, founder of UA Visuals, Australia's preferred drone services company, specializing in all things drone related from both creative and industrial uses. And we also have a masterclass academy for those wanting to take their drone knowledge to another level or to make a career out of it. We cover drone use in real estate, inspections and cinematography and so much more. So go check that out. Now the biggest draw card for getting this drone besides the creative capabilities is the new features that this has over the Mini 2. Now the features I'm talking about are the 48 megapixel capture mode, there's vertical shooting, the camera tilts up to positive 60 degrees, there's obstacle avoidance sensors, uh, it's under 250 grams, it's compact, it's quiet, it's easy to charge on the go, Quick to set up, quick to pack down. There's 360 degree and other panorama shooting modes. Uh, there's digital zoom, and now there's interval shooting and so much more features of this little drone. So, regarding basic inspection work for things like condition reporting, the Mini 3 can 100% be used as your drone of choice. You don't need to invest a $30,000 inspection drone like the M300. In fact, we've actually been using this for commercial clients. We've inspected things like light poles, street lights, roof and gutters, basic inspection work, and we've actually recently used this for an indoor flight investigating leaks at a desail plant, and it worked great. The only issue was being in a poorly lit environment. It did struggle a little bit uh, to get a clear image in low light, but other than that, it's a fantastic little drone. Also, the fact that this drone is under 250 grams, it means that you are in an exempted category. So the rules are slightly in your favor. There's less red tape around conditions, but always, as I say, <laughs> check with your local laws, especially if you're flying for commercial purposes. Now, the other huge factor of this drone is that it now tilts up 60 degrees, which makes it the first in its class, and you can also get under bridges, roofs, light poles, and capture with ease. Okay, making a 3D model. Now, as you saw in the intro part of this video, we managed to model a tiny house with this tiny drone. Now, whilst this isn't the greatest of all models, and to do this properly, you'd probably need a bigger drone, a P1, or something similar in quality, it still came out pretty good, as you can see. Now, creating a 3D model or a digital twin is something that is done using a process called photogrammetry. Now this isn't as complex as it used to be. You can essentially model anything if you have a camera, uh, your process or the capture process is right, and of course, if you use good software for this. Check out some examples here of digital twins captured just from a normal phone. The detail is impressive and it looks great. This process is now being so well received amongst many businesses out there and a lot of large companies now are using photogrammetry for inspecting infrastructure assets all across the world. And the main reason is it's quick to do, it's highly detailed, it's very accurate, it's easy to do, and it's just a very efficient way of inspecting things. So what we did to this tiny house is exactly the same process, but we used the Mini 3. The capture process was simple, and I'll explain it here briefly, but for the full process and all the technical aspects around this job, it's in our inspections masterclass, along with examples for you to try, and job shutters as well, so go check that out. So first, you wanna make sure you have a clear path Path around your structure and there's no obstacles whatsoever. You need to keep an equal distance away from that subject during the entire capture. That's the first thing and that's very important. All right, number two, you wanna shoot at a negative 45 degree angle, so facing downwards on an angle like this, and you wanna switch the camera to the 48 megapixel feature. Number three, JPEGs only, RAWs are not needed for 3D modeling. Number four, 
you are going to complete an orbit around the structure with about 70% overlap of your images. Number five, after you complete the orbit, you wanna go straight up to the top and to complete a top-down capture of the whole area, once again, with around about 70% overlap of your images. Now, during the capture of this 3D model, it was a little bit rushed. If we had a little bit more time, what we would have done is we would have done another orbit around the structure, maybe at a lower height, and maybe we might have even got a little bit closer to the subject and also to have more overlap. So one thing to note, now this, this was a total manual capture as well. Now at the time when we, when we captured this, uh, the Mini 3 didn't have interval shooting, which I believe was a new software update and you're able to do that now. So every two seconds you can capture, but at the time it was a full manual capture. There are many spatial data or digital twin inspection programs out there, but for the modeling of this particular tiny house, we used an Australian based company called Scanned. Go check them out. After the capture, what you need to do is simply collate everything together and you're just using the JPEGs, get all the JPEGs together and drop it into the software where it tells you to upload and it's as simple as that. After a few hours or depending on the complexity of the model, maybe, maybe even a couple of days, you will get an email to say that the model's ready. Now we were actually blown away. For this little drone, it wasn't bad at all. Now when you get close to the detail, you can tell it's not that amazing, but it's still usable to a degree, especially if you just want to do basic measurements or you want to see what it looks like in 3D. It's perfect for that. You can also bring up the original image if you want to get closer and look at something in the original file. Obviously, you just can't compare this data to something that was shot on a P1 or a Phase 1, which is 100 megapixels, or a H20T, where you can actually get really close and see cracks and details in the brickwork. But nevertheless, we were still very impressed and not bad for this little drone. Anyways, let me know if you've used a Mini 3 for things outside of creative work. I'd love to hear about it. Drop it in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this and got something out of it. I'll see you guys in the next one.